time for the piece you've all been waiting for is taking the model kit pieces that we built for the eyes, nose, and mouth and pushing them into shape. Uh, that's anatomically correct. So you can see the nose is not anatomically correct at all. It's super tiny, but the edge loops are good. That's all that matters. Like pushing this into shape, you'll see it is going to be incredibly fast and easy. So um, I, I have this image here that's on an actual plane. I didn't actually use the image plane tool. I just made a plane and put it on there and uh, built that in uh, Photoshop. So I have the Photoshop file plane and it looks like my cat is gonna try and destroy my studio if I don't feed her dinner. Wait, you have to wait, cat. Not your turn. So yeah, the nose, you know, um, these edge loops are good. It's easy, the nose is hard, the uh, eyelids hard. Um, lips extremely hard to get them right and just using these simple shapes we got a really good approximation started so um, the lips I had scaled they were they were like tiny they were like this like it doesn't matter you know you're just these are parts you're building a part individually and so now I can go in here and really push this into shape into the shapes that we want and so let's do it let's um, grab these and I got to be a little careful um, because I started I that's why I don't do the mouth cap or inside at all because it's real easy to grab them on accident. So um, just keep that in mind as you're pushing these into shape that you'll want to be really conscious of uh, where you're grabbing your edge loops from. And now we can see this beautiful image from the Faroe sculpting book. It's uh, my favorite book. It's the um, French couple, the married couple that did this sculpting. And it's not digital, it's a uh, traditional, which I think is really important for people. I hope. Uh, Hope to see a lot of you in the traditional uh, combo digital uh, character design and construction class this summer, where we really cover uh, in-depth uh, sculpting using monster clay, using traditional clay. So uh, once you do real clay, it is uh, really fun. And you'll see how much more you'll learn about anatomy and sculpting technique once you have real clay in your hands. It's a totally different experience. But having said that, uh, yeah, here's the hard part. So we want to keep them like together, but not together. And you can see the line right here at the bottom. It's almost touching. So we're getting down here. And then the outer parts up here, see the, the bulb, this, this meat part of the lip. I'm just going to go straight off the image plane first, and then we'll go tweak everything according to the anatomy reference later. So we're just going to use this straight away. And oh man, I have, okay, I was make sure I had my symmetry tool on at the moment. <laughs> It, you know, it's not such a, everyone makes a big deal about dis deleting one half, replicating it, resymmetry. I, I mean, you just got to be zen with it. It's just the way to do it. Don't, <laughs> don't try and do goofy stuff because you don't want to go through the trouble of cutting one, one half off, redoing the symmetry line and duplicating special and merging. It takes less than a minute, less than a minute of your time for when you're struggling with the form is really a, just bad, bad, bad decision to make. Like, don't do it. Just creating trouble for yourself. Uh, all right, that's looking pretty good. These are surprisingly um, high lips. It's a, it, it's an idealized study, although he usually works off of uh, models. And I think that's gonna work okay. This kind of curves in. There's a scoop that happens right there. So as we look at the um, lips here, we'll see like where these curves actually scoop inward with like where the concavity and where there's convexity is uh, incredibly important to get right. Um, I do want to keep the end. We do have the inner lips. These are kind of flat between these vertices. So let's grab uh, some of these edges. Grab that one and that one and that one. Let's just pull them down a little so we can see a little bit of that happening and then grab that one off and then there we go. So you get a bit more of a curve happening. I could probably go even farther with that. There we go. And that gives us a, uh, in digital especially, gives us a chance to get in there with the Wacom tablet and push those. Whereas um, if they're touching and you're in ZBrush or digital sculpting, that becomes really a pain in the neck to get in there. So I'll pull these and maybe bring them down so they're almost touching as well. Take that off, bring it down, take that off, bring it down somewhere. Beautiful. And we'll have to uh, do some more 
uh, reference on the side view. There was not a side view provided for this particular model. So I could see right here, that's definitely too much, um, too flat right in here. So I'll just fix it now. Grab that and bring it up some more like that. And then also here, maybe go to vertex mode while I'm making some of these decisions and bring that in. And this is where we're talking about with that diagonal happening here. We don't want that too far in, way too far in. It should be over here. And that's going to give the, the lip comes curls inward. It's not a, it's not going straight back into the mouth. It's curving around the horseshoe shape. So as you go around the horseshoe shape, these should not be off perpendicular very much. So you got to be mindful of that. If you just remember to do it, it'll look pretty good. If you forget to do it, you're going to get it looking pretty messed up. Yeah, there we go. And then as I um, as I finish some of this, uh, yeah, this has got to come forward some more. These got to go back. The nice arc flowing. Uh, just soften it. Hit the three key. There you go. I'm happy with that for now. Just that was quick, right? We're too darn fast. We can extrude off the edges, but before we do that, we stop and we move on to the next one. So let's do the eye socket in the eyeball um, over here. So I'm going to grab both of these. And whatever one, uh, so when you're selecting these, whichever one you select last, that's the pivot it's going to use. I find that pretty helpful. And you can see the uh, iris there, the eye socket is right there. Pretty helpful. So let's take that whole thing here and we will uh, zoom them up together and you'll see they're going to be off a bit. So that's okay. And at some point, if I need to, I can just move this out of the way and just get the eye right first you know that's that's important so we get the eye right first there we go that's about good i think right there i can see over here in the tear duct it does continue off to the side so maybe it's still a little bit too small so let's go a little bit bigger with it and that should be good right about there and then bring it up and center it Pretty good size. Okay, so we know when we bring this over, it's going to be way off. And it is, uh, you can recenter it to it um, as you're going. So we're going to push this out and we're just going to follow the rim here. It goes around. So bring it over here and start off uh, the outside. So I'm just going to take the eye and I'm going to put it on its own image for just a moment. We'll go click on it and we'll go eyeballs. There we go. Oops. And, yep, you can't name things in the layers the same names as eyeballs layer. And we'll hide that for a moment. There we go. So now we can see a little bit easier what we're doing. So grab the vertices as I'm pulling here. Um, I'm not going to use soft select just yet, but I'm thinking about it in the back of my mind already. Um, don't need that one. You can see it goes up more on the outside and down more on the inside. That's pretty standard for almost any eye type, regardless of where in the planet you got your genes from originally. Right here. Grab all of these, bring them down. Oops, make sure I don't miss any. There we go. But yeah, it goes up a little bit here before it goes down into the tear duct. And this is why I elected to add those extra edges because the tear duct is just so uh, important to get it right. And if it's off, if I feel like it's off more, I'll you know continue and get that first eyelid edge loop in here real nice and tight. There we go. That's looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. Yep. Bring them all the way down. Is a downward flow going right there for sure? And bring this one all. Whoops. Grab them both. Keep them together. I'm tempted to add a um, n-gon poly split right here for this little dip, and I think I'm going to. Uh, after all these years of thinking, <laughs> considering, uh, I missed a ridge. But uh, before I add that detail, though, let's finish the rest. Like that's 
one of the disciplines. So discipline, right? Um, I have the some documents on like you know what is artistic excellence and what you know what are the masters and what is some of the best. Uh, what do they accomplish? They're they're able to be disciplined when it comes to making good decisions, not disciplined to like force their art to be a certain way necessarily, but the discipline to know when you got to stop and do something differently than what it is you're doing at the moment. That's so it's really important to have that discipline um, for 3D. There we go. I'm bringing that up to the eyeball. You can see a really nice shape emerging here already. I'm kind of aligning some of them maybe more than I should, but it's okay. Yeah, and they, these go way down. Um, so you could, we could just do that. Bring this first eyelid uh, up here underneath it. I think uh, I'm going to stick with that for now. And then even with the you know beautiful feminine form like this, you're still going to have a little bag. It's part of the eye. It's part of the, the tissue underneath the eye socket. So the, a lot of the times the idealized, what we think things should look like that are beautiful is not at all. <laughs> it's uh, false. False advertising. There we go. I think that's okay. Yeah, I want to capture that, but I might hold off a minute. That's pretty darn close, though. Let's go into the 3D viewport, take a quick peek, and let's add the uh, eyeball on there and take the eyeball and let's bring it back. Whoops. And then um, if we need to, for the iris around, you can go to that edge right here and we can go to the good old slide edge tool and we can just middle mouse drag that, that. And just grab both of these, control right click, go to edge loop, edge loop utilities, to edge loop. There we go. So they're getting the front and oh, let's stop. That's strange. Oh, I'm grabbing other ones on action. Two edge loop, control right click, two edge loop utilities, two edge loop. Um, because there's a front and a back to this, and I don't know why it's stopping. It's really lame. It shouldn't be stopping. And then now if we uh, go to slide edge tool, um, although I would, for the lens and for the color, this is really the, um, the darkest part here, I would probably go in and add another edge loop around, which I think I'm going to do. So, but let's finish this thought. I'll go to mesh tools, slide edge, and just really carefully make sure it gets to the outer border, just like that. And then let's go in here, grab this con control click, control shift click, excuse me, go all the way around. I want to get the colored part and we'll connect at one time. Over here, connect and enter, and then we can double click this front part, slide edge again, and we can, remember it's gonna hold the silhouette so we can kind of push this around without ruining our sphere. So slide edge is super important, you guys. Use it, use it whenever possible. Oh, that update both viewports a little bit better. And, um, See this piece here. I'm going to grab all of those and do one more just so I don't have any flatness there. Um, in the eyeball, I go through taking this, punching it in, doing the lens, all that good stuff, but we don't need to quite do that yet. There we go. That's going to work really well. And then to get rid of that flatness here, you just push that out a tiny bit. And then if we want it, uh, same thing, if we want to. And kind of centered up a bit, we can push that out a little more. I think that's okay. Oh, I had the symmetry tool on, that's why. And I forgot I'm over here on the eyeball. And I just make sure I do uh, radial symmetry so my selections were clean. But we don't need that detail in the back of the eye, just the front of the eye. And I tend to just leave the whole eye um, intact. So that way when we're rotating it from the pivot, it's, um, you know, if we want to look around, <laughs> it's so fun. Okay, that looks good. Let's do the nose. So we'll go back to the front viewport and quite quickly, we're going to just go to vertex mode and I hear the uh, bridge. And see how thin it gets right there. It's crazy, right? You see these shapes coming out. 
right here. And then up here to the top. So yeah, it ended up here, not up in the forehead after all. So I'm just going to stick with that as opposed to my um, original image that I was showing, which was um, going up here above the brow. And I'll leave it there because I think that I like that spacing and we don't need that extra detail for the brow. We'll have plenty. But you can see the face is kind of, the edge is kind of um, matching up. You can see this edge matches with this one. This edge is going to match with that one nicely. Um, you know, as, as we bridge between these, you don't have a lot of just tough decisions to make. I like guess decisions are kind of become easy. And that's the hardest part, I think, is um, getting those good decisions um, for the edge loop flow, it just becomes a nightmare sometimes when you're way off, um, turn off object symmetry. And I just switch if it, it'll stick for the symmetry selection. So you just go move and then back to select uh, scale again, it'll push back out. So there we go. So I can push that out and grab those, push those out a little. Grab those, push those out a little bit more. And then as I'm coming down to really get to that bottom part of the flare, uh, no problem, I'll just go back up here and connect one time. So remember, adding those edge loops in is easy peasy, uh, taking them out, not so easy. So there we go. And then the uh, nostrils, of course, up here, maybe maybe I'll end up taking one out as I did that. I don't know, we'll, we'll find out in a minute. So I think I'm gonna end up adding an edge loop in here in the middle of the nostril. So let's try, let's, uh, Let's take that one out entirely. So just control backspace. One more time, if I just hit delete on the key, what happens? That little red, see that dot stopping there? There's vertices left behind. So we never want that unless you're doing it very much on purpose. That's with the control backspace differences from the delete key. Okay, so let's grab that edge, double click and get around and pull that up way up. And then Without the side view on this, it's all oh, quite a bit more difficult, but that's okay. Well, I think it's a good difficulty level to tackle for us at this stage in the game. And grab it, pull it up. And I'm not even looking at it from the side view right now because it would just drive me nuts probably. So let's just get this done first. Double click, control shift, double click, double click. Wherever it's a tri-star or five star, it's not going to know which way to go. Here we go. That uh, looks... Pretty darn good. That's the front, this little rim here where the shadow on the nostril is. And then this one right down here. Looking okay. They're not really, but so let's, um, let's smooth that and smooth that just so we kind of see the end results looking like. It's going to look pretty darn good by the time we're done. Although that looks really funny right now, doesn't it? See, that's why I shouldn't have done the nostril already. I should have just left the basic shape because this is going to create like a tangle, like a problem underneath there that I'd rather not be dealing with right now. But uh, we'll deal with it as we uh, go underneath the nostril. I could extrude out. Uh, I don't like this little paper thin uh, edge right here uh, at all. I think that really bothers me. Um, Oh, there it is, it's back behind it. Okay, I just missed the uh, edge, it was over there on the side. Okay, that's cool. And then the nostrils come flaring way up, so that I just gotta get the nostrils caught up to the rest of the um, nose shape that we're making right now. So that's all of this stuff here, minus, uh, oh no, there is no minus, that's right, okay. So bring it up here, and then we could also flare the nostrils, we could rotate if we want. Uh, that's about how it is in actual anatomy on there. And then you can see the front, the bell. We got that little front. She got like a little fairy looking nose, right? If we turn off the uh, X-ray mode, you can see she's got a little upturn on there. Oh, and I have symmetry turned off. Look at that. Oh, no. What am I going to do? I'm going to just... Delete one half. <laughs> Control Shift D. Grab the both sides. Combine. I should have a, a Mel script or a Python script up there that just does these moves for you. A um, little more advanced. We'll get to that eventually. And then edit mesh and merge. There we go. Yeah. 
so I'd, it'd be nice to just have these two panels next to each other. But again, um, I'm just going to keep going so you guys don't have to worry about making any adjustments to that kind of stuff right now. Just vertex pushing, just keeping it really, uh, really easy, super simple. There we go. Curls back a bit more, and then we curl that back. Oops, and then make sure I turn symmetry back off because we work on the eye. That's why that happened. So just got to be very aware of, you know, when we make a boo boo, what caused the mistake to happen, and that um, it's a pretty easy one to be aware of. It's just and that back on there we go so we can kind of bring that brow kind of matching the brow of the um the eyelids the angle you can see the little diagonal happening over there yeah and the eyeballs uh, turned out quite a bit bigger than i thought they were i i don't know about the barrel distortion the perspective on these eyes i think the eyes are maybe a little big the moment I'm gonna have to bring them down in size, but um, we'll just make all those little adjustments later. So there we go. So let's just look at the side of the nose here for a moment, and let's grab these uh, vertices here. These are the ones really causing that drag. So bring it up here, and bring these ones over. I got my yes, my symmetry tools working properly. Got it turned on. Forward some more. There we go. Not quite sure yet. We'll get into the uh, actual other anatomy reference in a moment. I think that's okay. Yeah, the lack of perspective, uh, you know, orthographic views, you're definitely going to get a whole different vibe for this. So we can see how much different it looks out here. So let's grab some of these. Bring him in. There we go. And same thing as before. I could, uh, whenever you feel like you need to use a slide edge tool as opposed to just moving them, do it. Like, don't let things get off. Uh, it, pushing arcs back and forth and back and forth is tiring and it's a waste of time. So you want to avoid uh, getting into that loop because it doesn't. Um, Kind of holds you back as you're doing this. So pull these out a little bit more. There we go. And we'll look at all those little nostril flares in just a, a bit. How this curls back and in. So yeah, still flat. It's still really flat. So um, you just gotta maybe the top down view. You can realize you you want the the tip of the nose way way out farther than it is at the moment. So we want it like at least to there, I would guess. Maybe don't go too crazy at first. We'll go that first. And grab the next pair. Like we have that buckling on the quad happening right there. So we'll pull that forward some more. There we go. Okay. Now it's looking pretty good. Go in here, go to face mode. If I want to grab that whole section instead of edges or vertices, you can just grab that whole face and know that. Hey, that's got to come way up here. This one here, maybe grab it by the edge and say, okay, that's the underneath part of the nostril. It's got to come way in here. This one's got to come forward quite a bit. And then if it's still, yeah, it's got to come way up here. So we're just catching up where the other pieces are. There we go. Yeah. Like that was looking good. Um, this is really paper thin. We're getting too uh, sharp out here. I think I might have. Yeah, there we go. Let me make sure I just didn't accidentally weld a vertex in there or something. Did I? Oh, I might have merged. Oh, I did. It merged. Let's see. Let's see if we can unmerge this mess in here. Ah, oh. boo. So maybe if the merge uh, weld settings too low uh, i think it snapped these together and it's set to 0.1 the default's 0 0.01 yeah eh, that's a good problem to show you how to fix okay and grab these two edges delete it and we'll just fix it with the multi-cut we'll just go straight across here so we'll go one two three enter and then bridge back across where i had accidentally merged the two vertices there we go and back to move 
So duly noted, 0.1, um, maybe 0 0.02 instead of 0 0.01, something like that. Maybe it went a little too. Sometimes I get lazy, just punch in a bigger number, so I don't want to like sit there and fiddle with it. Um, but after you do it a few times, you get back in a rhythm. I'm just out of rhythms. It's been a while since I've done this full time all day. Definitely, if you're modeling all every day, all day, if it's a full time job. Uh, you know, don't even think about it. You have all that stuff to memory. Okay, let's grab these faces here and let's um, punch those up into the nasal cavity. So this should be out of the way now. There we go. Yeah, I like it. And then we can um, hit three on the keyboard. We can round that off a little bit as well. And we have some stuff to fix like up in here as it goes back into the um, cheek area, like back in there. So go back to uh, x-ray mode over here. And then maybe we can start pushing in some of the stuff here. So let's do that. Let's grab these three pieces and let's bring those in a bit better. Then let's uh, bring that in there. You can see the softness here goes back a bit more. And that could be a shadow on the sculpture. Um, you know, when we start looking through Natty more carefully, we'll know. Yeah, this is too broad right here. It's actually really thin up at the tip. So let's, um, let's bring that back into the reference. So grab all of these. I'm just going to bring them way back in. That. Grab these ones here. And we can bring those up. There we go. Yep, and bring these back in as well. Yeah. All right, that looks pretty good, especially from where we started. So let me smooth that one time and click off of there and go to full screen. There we go. Yeah, we could pull that bridge out even farther can tell so we'll do that now so we'll grab these faces switch over to Q so I'm not accidentally moving anything grab more than I need take away what I don't need there we go and go to move and we'll just pull that whole bridge up a little grab these two again and bring it up again yeah and it looks like I missed I want to bring these out somewhere, so go ahead and pull. pull these guys here as well. Nice. And then smooth it again. I am happy with that. Yeah, and you can see the tear duct, like it really, you know, creates a problem. Um, in terms of the opening, as we do we want like a membrane there? Do we want to put a polygon in between there? So I think um, for that reason, I'm going to um, do an n-gon poly split on the tear duct in here and have it go um, across here. And then we're going to cut and make sure that we can actually add the tear duct even on the lowest poly because it's that important to capture that curve. This curve looks nice here in the lower eyelid. Uh, the curvature here on the top is looking okay. Uh, once you start expanding off of these models, you'll find that connecting them is not that big, not that bad. Let me come around the cheek and underneath the chin and the jawline, especially up here in the forehead, that'll be easy. And then uh, we just got to do the ear. All right, we'll get ready for the next set of detail. <laughs> 